Bam, we're live. Good morning. Let me see what's going on here. Um, uh, oh, okay. All right, great. It could be, uh, Dallin could be coming in any minute, Dallin Pepper, fittest man in America. If you didn't see last night's show, we had a blast. Tyler's fun. Tyler and Hiller, what a great combo. I'm surrounded by so many good people. I always forget when I have them on the show how fun it is. And Tyler stayed up late. I bet you he's tired as shit right now. Hey, my favorite Armenian. I thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Christine Young. Uh uh, wait, where is that? Uh I uh shit, where's that comment? Uh Augustus Link. Augustus Link. Uh I, I would like to live uh I would like to live call into Jake Chapman's tent. Okay. Is he out? Um, is he out uh, camping? Uh, positively fit adventures. Uh-oh. You know that's a sign of mental illness. When you got like some dog reference in your uh, dog or cat reference in your name, but we shall move forward. A few shows late, but back to the trans convo. I have a friend who competed in D1 collegiate sports at Clemson as a female. Nobody knew this person is trans. Does this negate any success the team had? Yeah, all of it. All of it. Um, I'm. Uh, hey, did your friend who's trans? Did your is your friend the tranny? Do they feel bad at all for that? I always wondered about that. Like, don't they feel bad? Like, I mean, it's just straight cheating. Masquerading. There was a, um, there was a high, I saw a story recently. I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but I saw a high school basketball coach. Um, she was coaching a 13 year old in basketball and she pretended to be a 13 year old and went out onto the court. Fucking nuts. Uh, I'm tired of shit also. Good thing I have my Paper Street coffee to wake me up. Yeah, I woke up so tired too. I was up so late last night. I was just up late fooling around. I I um uh I got off the show and then I went and I had a shitload of brisket. We had a ton of brisket left over from the UFC fight that we got from a, a barbecue place in town. And then so I ate a shitload of that. And then my mom had uh, been at the house and she had made a ton of Brussels sprouts. So I had a ton of those. And then I watched um I watched this show. If you, do you guys know a show called Kill Tony? I watched a little Kill Tony. Man, talk about I watched it at 1.25 time and then some of it I watched at 2.0. Boy, that show makes me feel uncomfortable. Boy, that's a weird show. Boy, that is a weird show. It has uh it, it's just a, it's just two hours of just crazy awkward moments. I laughed once in two hours. So funny. I laughed once in two hours. Man, uh, it was the, Joe Rogan and Tucker Carlson were, were on it, and I couldn't even stop. I couldn't stop watching um, how awkward Joe is on the show. I can't believe how awkward every. The only person who's not awkward is the guest, is the host. It's just a fuck. I, I swear, it's two hours of train wreck. I no, I didn't enjoy. You know what, Thomas? I didn't enjoy the roasts. I did. I did not. I did not enjoy the roasts. I don't know. Call me soft. For some reason, I thought. I mean, I mean, there were some some parts of the roast I definitely enjoyed. There were some parts I didn't. We'll get back to that. Down. What's up, dude? Oh, what's up? Good morning. Hey, do you do you know this show called Kill Tony on um, YouTube? Like, it's I like do. Yeah. The largest live show. Have you ever watched it? Uh, I just see clips on like Instagram. Yeah, the clips are good. I saw. I don't know who it is. Uh, but he actually can't speak and he just types his stuff and it's probably one of the best jokes i've ever heard oh he went on stage and doesn't talk he just typed his stuff yeah he he has some sort of disability um but how I, does the audience see it how does the audience see so it so he types it on a computer and then it'll broadcast like uh like a siri type voice like a computer voice is he in a chair i can't remember if i'm being honest <laughs> Oh God, that's I, a, that, know, I that's sent it. Good. I sent it to everybody. I thought it was hilarious. But. Hey, am I am I interrupting your training? No, it's deload week. Um, I got to the gym a little bit early, so we're doing this, and then I'll head over to the gym side of the gym and get to work. Okay, I'm not going to accept that answer. Uh, let me fo follow up question. If 
we didn't have this event coming this week. 7 a.m. is not normally a good time for you. Well, it's 10 a.m. here. Oh, 10 a.m. is not normally a good time for you. Yeah, normally I get here. I start warming up right now. So you have you have uh, you've made an exception because Absolutely. of the event. You're Just a good for you. dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're you're you are awesome. Uh, hey, um, how is how how are the new training facilities? It's awesome. I mean, we have a super cool gym. It's super awesome to be back in an affiliate because when we were down in Naples, we were next to CrossFit Naples, um, but it's still very separate. Like uh, it was a couple of doors down, and we didn't we didn't see much going on over there. And um, just how Naples is, it's typically a older community but here it's a uh, super awesome to be an affiliate we've got we also have like an office side where we've got chiropractors massage therapists um actually the owner of the gym is a don't want to butcher this i believe she has a doctor in psychology so there's therapists here um they're big in incorporating fitness into all sides of health whether but it's um or physical but torres doesn't even have his client that needs their mental therapy anymore <laughs> <laughs> James. Um, <laughs> yeah, James. Yeah. Um and, and and Fee Fee when we had Fee on the show, she's loving it too. She, yeah, it's been it was it's been a good change just coming up here. I love Naples, but it was it was just time for something different. And and when you say there's um older people in Naples, you are not joking. I have been there twice and um uh, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll start with they're remarkably attractive older people. They're the most attractive gray haired people you've, you've ever seen on the planet. But literally everywhere you go, you can play that game where, OK, where's someone without gray hair? I mean, it's really yeah. like that. It's it's old people and money. Like, yeah, you can't drive down the street without seeing. 10 sports cars like super nice Lamborghinis just everywhere. And like you walk into a restaurant and it's like all those old gray haired people. But yeah, you, you know, they have money, too. Hey, um, in, um, in, I, I used to live in Berkeley. I lived in Berkeley for years and years and it has the worst drivers in the world. And I, I always thought it was because, um, it was a, it was the, they were just people who were trapped in their head, just really smart people who were like yeah. all 40 or 50 pounds overhead, uh, 40 or 50 pounds overweight. And just people who were trapped in their head. It's a, it's a call. Everyone just looks like a dork, right? Yeah, yeah. Like all they do is hang out with a protractor. Are they pretty shitty drivers in Naples too? Cause it's just shitloads of old people. Like, did you notice that? Uh, I would say when like all the snowbirds come down, <clears throat> uh, not the ones that like live there all the time. It's like most of the roads are like 45, but everyone in Naples knows you just go 60 everywhere. Uh -huh. and it's like people are going 35 and it's yeah. just like one lane's completely stopped and you got people cutting everyone off and yeah it's pretty bad driving yeah it's wild you and, and you have to be you have to be extra patient you can't really my mom taught yeah. me this you can't really honk at old people it just makes it worse you start getting like road rage because someone's driving too slow or they're not using a blinker and then you swerve around them aggressively and you look over it's like some 85 year old woman yeah like, oh, now if not i feel bad and you hear you hear God go. I'm gonna remind you of that. Yeah, exactly. When you come up here, you're fucked. No, you just that night you just go to sleep and you just think about that. <laughs> Fuck! I honked at an 85 year old lady. What's wrong? With you? Exactly. Um. Uh. uh it, it's very interesting watching this thing come together because um we're making we make the CrossFit Games look like they're organized. No one knows the we prize money. No one knows when the events are going. And, it, and it's it's um, it's kind of, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of fun. And you were on a text thread with um, Colton. Uh, so so Jr. is basically organizing uh, how the prize money is going to go. And so I think he decided uh, five thousand, two thousand, one thousand, one thousand. I think he's going to we'll know for sure uh, Wednesday. And then um, and then I think we know how the workouts are going to go in terms of I think it's just like one and done. I think like if you in, in order to win the money. Yeah, like, I think like it's just first at sense. Okay, so that so you've heard that too. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think we'll know that for sure on Wednesday too. But you were on this thread with Jason and Colton, um, and uh, and Taylor and Jr. How how is that thread going? How like does is everyone getting along in there, or how how is that how are things <laughs> going on in there? I think there's I've heard about your thread, and some things can't be shared from that thread, and I'll have to say the same <laughs> thing about this thread, <laughs> but. Colton is definitely out of his shell. He came bursting through it. He's always got something to say. Um, there's definitely some arguments on how we're going to do the workouts, when we're going to do the workouts. I think Jason's a little nervous. To, he doesn't want to overdo it. doesn't want to hurt twice in a day, so he wants to do like 
one Thursday, two Friday, one Saturday. Yeah. Some of us are thinking two Thursday, two Friday, and then we'll live stream some some of the redos, even though they won't count. It's just entertaining. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting. I think with all the trash talk happening, I think everybody means every word, but we all respect each other. So it'll be fun. What I heard, I had a very brief conversation with uh, JR yesterday, and he basically told me that uh, he didn't give me any details about the thread, like specifics, other than you and Colton are just like, okay, whatever, give me the workout and I'll fucking do it. And Taylor and Jason are just like, they got a fucking opinion about everything, and they're just like, it's got to be like this, it's got to be like that. They have a they have an opinion about everything, and it always has to be different from the other person's. <laughs> no matter what they actually think, they have to disagree. It, just, uh, it shows it shows uh, who's soft and who's just here to work. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, are, are you feeling pretty confident? Absolutely. Bunch of, um, bunch of pansies. Yeah. Um, uh, he also told me that Torres told him that you're that you are a one and done guy. Yeah, honestly, I've done, I've redone workouts in the past. Um, and like, I'm always within just a few seconds or a few reps, no matter if I do a completely different strategy. Like, usually I get about the same thing, unless something goes super wrong or say a camera shuts off for whatever reason, uh, or I don't like the way my squat depth looks. But for the most part, I'm able to do it right the first time. So you don't necessarily, and, and that is what JR said. He said, yeah, I get the impression Dallin doesn't redo a workout unless like he approached it totally wrong or, or yeah. yeah, like you said, like something was wrong with the pull-up bar or something like that in, re in regards to the judging. But as far as your scores, you come out hard and, and you get it done on the first try. Yeah, that's the goal. But maybe maybe for entertainment purposes, we'll throw down one extra time this weekend. What, crazy. Um, do you uh, do you do you think you're going to win that? You think you that you'll be five thousand dollars richer? I plan on it. I already made purchases, knowing that I'm got an extra five grand. <laughs> uh, who's who's coming down with you? Uh, so we're going to drive up tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, so me and my wife will drive up with the dog, and then Matt and Coach Jaden, uh, who's here for the month. And Fee and Al will be driving in another car. We'll all just drive up together. Shouldn't be too bad. It's about five and a half, six hours. And we'll leave, leave in enough time to go get a sweat in that crash and hang out and just get settled. Uh, what about your, your pops? Is your dad coming? No, I mean, he's in Utah. Oh, okay. What, yeah. I, I, was he coming? Um, I mean, he's coming to – he'll be at semis, the games, everything else, but – Okay, I must have misunderstood. When we talked, I thought I thought maybe you mentioned your dad was coming. And um, why the dog? Why does the dog have to come? Is that a good thing? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. And Jason wanted him to come to hang out with his dog. We're so I'm staying at Jason's house all weekends. <laughs> wow, it's going to be an interesting dynamic, right? Yeah. Wow. So um. We'll, we'll see. Uh, what if your what does your dog need to get walked like at three in the morning or anything or is it it's already broken and dog and knows the ropes? He sleeps all day, all night, and my wife does the morning, I do the night. So, yeah, oh. I never. She's she's incredible. She she makes sure that I will have zero responsibility all week. Okay, okay, good. The dog the, the dog the dog um makes me nervous. Hey, um. What what about the concerns early on? Um, people were saying, "Hey, you'll never be able to pull this off. People aren't going to want to do the quarterfinals live because basically, you know, I mean, this is I think this is a fact. Tell me if I'm wrong, but the fact is is that other athletes will be watching you guys in order to get better scores, and that's a real thing, right or no? Yeah, and especially I think you're you're 100 right. Um, anytime you can find out a score, it gives you some idea of a pacing, especially. I think we have a good group of athletes with different strengths. And so like everyone's going to get a top time from some sort of workout. And when you have something like that, you're able to get your splits out and know exactly how to pace, what not to do. And something with quarterfinals where the days have, or they've extended like the window, like people can literally just wait until we do it and then do the workout. But I think the way the four of us are approaching it is, go ahead and watch us, but then you, you still have to have the fitness to beat us. And just because you see our score doesn't mean much. 
and, and tell me some of the things like when if you watch someone else do a workout before you did it, uh, what what would be some of the things you'd be anything else besides pacing you'd be looking at? Setup, uh, pacing, setup, um, like where it starts to fall apart a little bit, and that can fall under pacing. But um, like the perfect example is uh, when James and I. <laughs> did quarterfinals or the group, the whole group of us did it last year. We would take turns who would go in for who would go first based on the workout. And then we know, say Emma sets this crazy time on a workout. We know she'll do well on. Then we can put our splits based on where we think we need to finish and have a, have a confident strategy when you finish or, and feel confident that your time is where it needs to be. In that, in that documentary that um, I think it was in the documentary or in some interview um, Danielle did. She basically said that her and who is the other girl over there at Underdogs? It was her, um... Carrie or Bethany. Oh, Bethany. Sorry, her yeah. and Bethany would do oh, yeah. do the work. For, they they knew that Carrie had the best chance of making it into. You had to be in the top five that year to go to the games. Only five people got to go, and so her and Bethany had decided to be the rabbits, and then mm-hmm. and then Carrie and then Carrie got in, and not to take anything from Carrie, but that's huge, right? Absolutely, like. And I, I've talked with Carrie, Bethany, Danielle, like about that situation. Coop, he was there. And like Carrie has the almost like gratitude and respect that they did that to help her out. And I know those guys are all real tight. So, but and, and I, I only bring it up for the fact like that shit is real. Like you guys are really, um, you're really putting it on the line to do this. Do you have any concerns? Because, because they're only taking. If I understand correctly, last year they took 60 people, and this year they're taking 40. Do yeah, any, which is Do you have any concerns about about it um, coming to bite you in the ass? No, I, I think that comes with, like, confidence over time, and like something that we've all earned. Um, but it is interesting with the 40 because last year with the 60, there were people that fell in the 40 to 60 in Europe and I think one or two of the North American regions who actually made the games. Yeah, I th- someone yesterday I think was saying Yellow Hosta was. One- mm-hmm. I mean, he did great at the games. Not a dig at him, incredible guy, but he was one of those people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I I want to say it was because of a penalty. So that becomes down to like perfect execution. And I would rather be five spots lower with zero question about any of my movement standards than be sitting there worrying that I'm going to get a penalty just because I was cutting the line. So what? So what is the deal here? The, the countries, North America split up into two, and you're you're on the east side, right? Yep, east. Oh, and and for anyone who's uh, listening, uh, tickets are available now for uh, the Syndicate semifinal over, and it's in Knoxville. Yes, sir. Okay, so tickets are available for that. So, uh, and that's a great event. Uh, Wilson throws an amazing event over there. So basically, they take all of the men who qualified for the quarterfinals. They take your quarterfinal scores, and those are the people on the eastern side of North America, and then the top 40 are the guys who get invited? Yep. God, that's that hairball. God. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah, wow. And especially, like, uh, I think someone did, like, a worldwide comparison based on regions from quarterfinals last year, and, like, the east and Europe, the field is deep. Like, you could take 80th in Europe – and be 30th in the West. Oh, like wow. Last year in quarterfinals, based on simply based on scores. So I'm pretty sure Europe has the most stacked and the stacked field from quarterfinals to semifinals. Like to make the semifinals, you've really got to like be on your game um, just to make that top 40. Well, then I'll, in, in my head, I'll quit shitting on them. I always just think it's easy everywhere else. So you're saying you're, the, the European men do have a tough road to hoe. Yeah. I mean, especially. It's like the it's it's all based on like different levels, right? Like obviously the top European men are incredible, but especially in Europe, I think it's the um, like thirty through sixty in the quarter quarterfinals that are so tight and so close on every single workout. Um, the the way it's going to go, I think, is all four of you guys will all go at the same time. Yeah, for, that's the for, goal. I think for every workout. And, and we still don't even know if all the workouts are on Thursday and Friday or if you guys are going to let it spill over to Saturday, right? We don't even know yet. We'll know Wednesday. Yeah. I think we're going to decide. We made the decision to call that once we know the workouts. 
um, in case there's maybe there's one that's going to absolutely destroy us, and maybe there's some easy ones, but easy. Uh, and, and the workouts come out tomorrow at 3 p.m.? I think so, yeah. And then um, JR was saying by 8 p.m., I, I think by 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you guys will have it locked down. Yeah, at the latest, I think. How did you do last year at the quarterfinals? Uh, I believe I won the East and was third overall. And um, third third in the world. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so I've heard some people say, hey, quarterfinals are made for Dallin. Uh, is, there, is there a reason for that? Is there something about these workouts that, that make it so they fall in your wheelhouse? Would you agree that those are good workouts for you? Or is it like, hey, dude, listen, I'm the fittest guy in America. They're all good for me. I was going to say every competition is good for me. Like, I know, I know that's coming from Jason too. So, <laughs> um, the, I, I, I didn't remember who it came from, but I think you're right. I think you're right. Jason. Yeah. He's, he's out here complaining that I'm just going to walk away with five grand. But, um, I think it's, it's very classic CrossFit for the most part when it is online. Um, it's just, maybe it's a barbell and some burpees or some rowing. Um, they can't do anything too crazy. Uh, I like to think I'm good at that, but I'm also good at the stuff that's going to show up at the games. So Jason can just, just good at complaining. It, 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 just for to be, to be lazy. So you're really good at CrossFit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like, you know, um, the rich Froney thing, uh, yeah. last day of the games, uh, when, when, when they start doing CrossFit, um, you, you're, you're happy. You're like, okay, I, I'm, I do CrossFit. Yeah, the same. I mean, same thing happened at the games this year and Rogue. Like those were my best two days. Oh, Since interesting. Day. Yeah. Um, uh, someone in here is trying to sell you a dog with your money. Let me see. Uh, oh, look, yeah, Colt Mertens, uh, the dog salesman. Uh, I'm gonna uh, take <laughs> after I beat you this weekend. I'm gonna take Millie. <laughs> is that his personal dog? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> put put Millie on the line. Oh my God, how horrible would that be if you guys bet each other's dogs and one of you took the other dogs home? Oh my God. I'm pretty sure we all love our dogs. That'd be pretty brutal. Yeah. Um. So 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 you'll come you'll come here and and, and you'll and you'll and you'll do these workouts. Um. W- w- when when this came up, you didn't hesitate at all. No way. I think, especially after the open, um, and the feedback and some of the DMs I got, some of the stuff that was happening on the show and like it felt like old school open announcement crossfit um the community gets to be so involved like what's what's really special i think about this community and the athletes is if if we're able to give them stuff that they enjoy watching and like they want to support us and we can give some entertainment like and then they're giving back to us by it's little stuff following subscribing on youtube um grabbing a shirt or a belt, whatever it might be. And just like dropping a comment, all that stuff helps us so much. And so it's a, it's a give and a take for both sides. And uh, I think it's pretty cool that I got the opportunity that you asked me and that the community wants something like this. And so I'm, I couldn't, I wouldn't hesitate in a million years to do something like it. It would be, it'd be silly not to. So, so you in, you you feed off the energy. It was good. Like you came, yeah. you came, you came to. Uh, you did the open. Um, what did we do for that? You we did the open live too. Yeah, that was you the first there. week. Okay. Oh right, right. We did weeks one, two, and three. I was like, I don't remember the four of you one place. Okay. And so you do that, and then you, and then, and then there's in the feedback loop. It's it's a net positive. You're motivated. It gives you. It energizes you. The people are pumped. And so the same for this. Come here. Do this. Put on a great show. Um, maybe uh, not maybe take a little more risk than the other athletes who get to do it behind closed doors, but it's a net win because of the, the energy you get from the crowd that, yeah. that it extends for your entire career. They're, there's yeah, people who are going to watch you now who will become down fans who will give you love that you can feed off of for the rest of your career. Yeah. It gives me a platform to show who I am and people can make connections. Hopefully I can be personable to all these people um, and continue to, just grow the sport and grow the community. So definitely a win. Like I know there's prize money, but that's not even, I would have said yes without the prize money, but like, don't take it away. Don't yeah, no, it. no, we won't take it away. But that, <laughs> but that, but that is true. Um, uh, I think all of you, uh, I think Jason Colton, you, um, and Taylor, 
didn't even know that there was prize money when we asked you same with the open yeah. you guys didn't know that there was going to be any uh, pocket cash and you guys didn't know which is kind of crazy that you guys do that i'm i'm already thinking like how do i i don't i've never sent anyone $5000 i guess i'll just tell sarah from ca yeah. peptide she's putting up the 5 grand and, and born primitive Dude, putting she up was, a shitload she was of prize putting money. up all sorts of stuff during all that burpee stuff i know wasn't that wasn't that that's crazy <laughs> would, that, would, would you call that like one of the coolest shows you've done uh yeah for sure it, it it was cool for a lot of reasons it was cool because we got to piggyback off of what the barbell spin did yeah and that the two you know i was promoting his event he was promoting my my event it was cool because we got tim murray we got the fittest man in america in in the short stature division yeah um it was cool because you got got to see the community like i had no idea that they were gonna yeah. uh, pump that much cash and then of course my relationship with the sponsor yeah dude it was it um it was fun. I was just telling the guys today, the sponsors for the show now are like coming out of the woodworks like crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't believe it. I was told I'll never get a sponsor a year or two ago. And now they're just pouring out of the woodworks. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard um, having multiple options for sponsors because I yeah, want to stay off. I want to stay real to, to what I preach, but I also need money to go to semifinals to, to film and, yeah, it's 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 tricky. Do you have that issue? Have you have you ever had to turn down a sponsor? You're like, damn, I want your money, but like, I don't know if I can. Do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've we've said no to some things where it just it doesn't feel right, and like you said, like trying to be super authentic. Um, I make sure I use, I want to use what I promote, and that makes the job that much easier because you could take a video or a picture of me anytime in training or throughout the day, and I'm like, like I'm just. I don't want to say I'm a walking billboard, but I use the products that I'm pushing, um, right. which makes the job that much easier. So yeah, yeah, you want to just be like you want to be like drinking a can of rain before a workout, and then uh, just because that you you get caffeinated before a workout, and then that's it, it's done. Yeah, you, you yeah, want someone, to, yeah. Someone at the we did a brute camp like two or last weekend. I can't even remember, but like had a, had a rain, and someone was like, "Oh, it's good to see that like you guys actually drink that stuff." Like. You, you, you don't know because I don't think everyone in social media or even like in the CrossFit space is holding to that same standard where um, maybe they're just looking for a little cash grab. You know? uh, the way we have our sponsors on this show is we have the sponsors we talk about on the show and then we have sponsors that like um, I think uh, DraftKings is one of our sponsors that's just like an automatic recording in our iTunes and our Spotify. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. But I um I I don't gamble. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the owner of DraftKings. I don't I don't even know the first thing about DraftKings. I don't even know if the I don't even understand those numbers plus and negative. So we kind of keep them kind of in the outer loop. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they just they just get to put their recording in there as opposed to like BirthFit. Like God, I believe in everything they're doing. Yeah. It's like I mean, you don't choose what ad comes up when you start a vi YouTube video, right? Right. Like I don't think right. the person chooses that. It's just. That just happens to be how it is, and yeah, I think that's totally fine. Yeah, and then and we get paid for that too. So they yeah. may like they yeah, there could be a, a, a in my YouTube account there could be an ad for a dialysis center. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like thank yeah. you for the two, thank you for the two pennies for for running yeah, that seriously. ad. Seriously, and I think and I think the people accept that too. I don't think that they're like I think they accept that, but it, but it would be weird to um, I don't know. There, there are some that could get. There are some that could get. Uh, there are some that could get squirrely. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have? Do you have it set up so you got like your sponsors of the show, and then people are coming in for like very specific events? Is that how you're, you've been doing it? Um. The well, the relationship we have with Born Primitive is just building, right? So yeah. they, they, they had, dude, that was kind of crazy. So they're basically like. Um, uh, I had that guy, the owner on the podcast. And so then I called him and I said, Hey, um, I'm well, f first, I reached out to uh, someone else to sponsor the event and they said they didn't have the money to sponsor it. So then I reached out to born primitive and they were like, I, 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 this, th I think the spirit of what I'm saying is right. Don't quote me on this exactly, but yeah. they were like, Hey, can we see your numbers? And I'm like, Hey, I don't really want to show you our numbers because our numbers are so low that you're not, you're not going to think what I'm asking for is worth it. And so, um, 
they're like, okay, that's weird, right? I mean, because they want to yeah. know so they can get the return. <laughs> and so we asked for the money, and we didn't. Add, we we actually we asked for let. It cost us more money to do the open than than the money we brought in. But just like you, it doesn't matter because it adds brand value. So it like just mm -hmm. energized the podcast, right? We got an extra hundred yeah. subscribers. Um, other sponsors saw it. And so we took that opportunity. So they gave us the money. We used the money to fly you guys out and get hotel and in a little pocket cash. And then um, they saw the, res they saw the response and they're like, yeah. Holy shit. Absolutely. They, they couldn't believe it, but it was easy because I wear Savage ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I wear their, uh, their, their joggers like crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so, so it was easy. And, and that's why we reached out to him. We reached out to him because it was like, Hey, I like that sh shit. Right. So I'm sure your agent does that too. You're like, Hey, I really like, this is my favorite vacuum cleaner. I fuck me. I love, I, I actually like vacuuming because I, because of this vacuum cleaner. So can you reach exactly. out to them? So, um, so then that happened. And so then when we did the quarterfinals, they're like, fuck dude, we're in. Yeah. So, but if they want, but ideally I'm like, going back to your question, I'm not partitioning it. Like, Hey, these are for the year and these are for events i'm just like send me your fucking money <laughs> you know <laughs> what i mean like i don't care for sure yeah no, because we're because we, like... we don't, we're just trying to make the ball keep rolling yeah authentically as things pop over the horizon yeah for sure that's interesting you bring up like your numbers because but i feel like the people that are what they call themselves the savanistas yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah those guys are as loyal as it comes and it's so cool yeah, it's crazy cool. It, it, it's cra it's crazy, crazy cool. I can't really express to them their um their in their influence, right? Every, yeah. So I'll have guests on the show, just a random random ding dong, and then <laughs> um th a day later they'll be like, "Dude, you have the nicest listeners ever." Yeah, they'll eat it up. It's awesome. Yeah, and because they go over to the DMs and thank the person for coming, like it was their house. Like they thank the people yeah. for coming on the podcast, and yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. That's so cool. Did anyone in your camp express concern about you doing the quarterfinals live? Was like Matt, like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea, or maybe your wife be like, you know, Dallin, did, did anyone express concern about just because because of the fact that you're doing it live and other people will get to see it? No, I, I mean, when I told Matt, he was right on board. Uh, my wife is like, as long as you kick their ass, then sure. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone was pretty stoked. He was all about it. Um, yeah, and like we we enjoy being around the people that we're going to be around this weekend. And like Crash is an incredible gym. Um, so there, it was it was a no brainer for sure for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it it is it is good as much of a, a shit show this podcast is. How lucky are we to have fucking Jr. Dude, right? Like a what real a, a, a an adult. <laughs> a responsible adult yeah a responsible takes, adult. takes care of business and will branstetter do you know him i love will. i, I talked to will quite a bit actually yeah crazy any by the way anyone who is at crossfit crash uh this week just walk right up to will and say thank you yeah just and squeeze his big old fucking badunka dunk like just <laughs> like hey I, I think it's inevitable um that you win the games it, it just I would agree yeah, the trajectory is just there. It's it's weird that uh, only me and you know that. I feel like, um, but everyone's just afraid to say it for some reason. Where are you compared to last year? Can you tell us? Like, can you tell us? Like, can you give us something? I know you guys like to kind of hide your numbers, but can you be like? Yeah. Can you tell me like, hey, I put ten pounds on my deadlift, or my mile time has gone down by ten seconds? Is there anything you could share with us that you're like, fuck, watch out, people? Yeah. So if you look at the games last year, five k bad, Helen very average um of course the ski bag that was also bad but we won't go into that i got no rep to bunch and f ended up failing so i pushed it right to the limit but the the main takeaway the last three years has been running it's honestly been really frustrating like matt and i will finish a competition or finish an event that has running and it's like we just look at each other there used to be conversations about how we'd approach it we think we get better come off the floor and like no words need to be said because we're both just like confused and disappointed why it hasn't been working but if you look at last year's games again the 5k in helen was not great so we took a whole new approach to running and my 5k i pr'd by a minute and 40 seconds two months ago wow so wow and, uh, and how did that feel w were you were you devastated at the end of that 5k or 
how, how'd you feel? Yeah, I, I went for it. Like I was shitting myself the rest of the day, honestly, like <laughs> that did not feel good, but it was exactly what I needed to just like continue that momentum. And that's something uh, we've worked very hard on and finally getting some results. So oh, was it scary to take a different approach? Absolutely. Um, and I guess yes and no. Uh, I mean, I got to like, Matt's been incredible. He's been researching and studying, reading just all things running. And we found this book that he's been going off of and the programming and um, just a different style than we've ever done together. And we've been together for six, seven years now. Um, and we just had to try something new to get it to work. And luckily they found that thing and we'll just keep going with it. Does he, does he, um, do, do, do you guys, does someone call a meeting for that? Like, all, like, does he say, Hey, Dallin, uh, when you get here today, let's, uh, I want to talk to you and you guys sit down or is it just, you're just hanging out and it just comes up casually when you talk about like reworking something like that? Uh, both for sure. Um, we usually have like a sit down meeting during a deload week to plan out the next cycle. Um, I enjoy that for my brain. Um, after the competitions, we'll have a sit down meeting as well, but it'll also come like when we're hanging out, playing games, having dinner, whatever it might be. Um, we'll be talking about like a running workout that's coming up in two days and that type of thing. So, yeah. The, 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 the camp who's in it now in, in Jacksonville. Yeah. Right now it's just me and fee. And, um, is that significantly better? Do you feel like you get more quality coach time from Matt as opposed to yeah, having uh, and, Emma there, Danielle there, Nate there? Yeah. And that's, I think that's simply just a number versus time situation. It's not anything where anyone was taking more time. It was just like, let's say there's an hour and there's five athletes. We all get even time. Now there's two athletes. It's like, it's like, that's just how it is. Um, but it has been good. It has been really good. And, and how about not having James there? Do you feel like that maybe that you don't have someone to push as hard with now that James isn't there? Yeah, I do. I do miss having James around and he was here for 10 days and that was awesome and w would love for him to eventually make it back over here. And I think that's completely up to him and Danica, but um, I think they're looking into that. But I definitely miss having James out here. Um, th th uh, this weekend, do you, do you have an idea of how the placements are going to happen? Like if I, can you tell me what, how you think it's going to place between you, Colton, uh, Jason and Taylor? Um, honestly, no, not until the workouts come out. Cause like what's, what's really interesting about competing against someone say like Colton, um, sets almost two world records in the open. Like there's some workouts that you are, you will not beat Colton in and that's just how it is. And then there are some workouts where Colton will not beat the rest of us in and that's, that's just st statistically speaking, but um, I, I do think I actually have a great shot of winning, and that's the plan. But other than that, I have no idea um, what order we might fall. That that is what makes him a crazy outlier, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I mean, Tia is fucking as good as they get, right? And yeah. yet, Ariel in that workout at the games, I don't know, it was last year or the year before, it just comes out there. And beats her on the um, uh, oh the traverse, uh, right? Yeah, the parallel bar ones, just yeah. out of fucking nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. But it, and so, but they're like you said, you can. I don't know if you can say that about any other athlete in the entire CrossFit space. There is just shit that Colton just can't be beat at. Yeah, it was. Uh, what was the front squat deadlift dip burpee at Wadapalooza? Like during one of the behind the scenes things, it's like, oh yep, Colton's gonna win this. Or there's been times where. Uh, there's like a squat muscle up handstand push up. I remember it was my first year at Wadapalooza. We're going on the floor and like Pat yelled, soak it in Colton. Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just know like, and, and that's okay. Like the dude's a savage and right. I, I have a lot of respect for Colton. So yeah, yeah, it, it is, it is trippy watching him right before our eyes. He's been generous enough to just show uh, his whole, like we got, we've got to see his whole kind of, evolution just uh, yeah. as, as a as a person mm -hmm. like someone Absolutely. said he, he just came out of his shell and i don't think um the way the way you said you worked on your running i think he works on coming out of his shell like that like for him it's not just like he's getting older and more mature it's like yeah. hey, like i really don't want to do this shit 
But since I'm here, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to learn how to fucking talk and crack jokes. And like, he probably has a joke book at home. <laughs> he writes down all his thoughts throughout the day. Yeah. Not do, yeah. Tons of respect for Colton. <clears throat> all right. Uh, do you think anyone's feelings have been hurt? Colton's gone pretty hard at Jason. Do you think Jason? Colton has. Colton has been pretty hard. <laughs> I've, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed that. I've got, I've got another video coming today. I'll, get, I'll film it after this session. But. No, no. If if anyone's feelings get hurt, then that's on them. They're too soft. It, or, or hey, your feelings were supposed to get hurt. Yeah, or maybe maybe it hit home just a little too deep. <laughs> uh, this is crazy. It, it's crazy how clean uh, it just fit right on there, right? Yeah, it's it's um, it's this one's unsettling. The other the other two are funny. This one is just uh, Wad Zombie made these for you. Yeah, Wad Zombie and then uh, Micah Shoemaker helped me out a little bit too. I mean, I mean these are uh, – and then look at this one. They even – they uh, uh, Tyler noticed even the, the detail in the Photoshop putting Colton's head behind this, this dog right here. Yeah, See how the dog – I didn't even notice that, honestly. I just took the picture and posted it, but that's clean. Yeah, right? Give it, give it a little depth. And then, and then poor, poor Jason. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That one is the one I hesitated. I I did hesitate. I'll give too close to home. Like Jason, you really do look like that dude. <laughs> only only when the face is all distorted. There is so that. Do you know where the the first time this came out was actually from Danielle? Um, there's a picture of Jason swimming at Wadapalooza, and like no one looks good swimming because you're like breathing like out of half your mouth and face is all twisted up. And that's where that's where that all started from. It was awesome. Yeah, John Young's probably pretty happy because he gets made fun of for being that same guy. So he's probably like, "Fuck, you can have it, Jason." I should have. You. I should have just put John Young and tagged Jason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you. I look forward to your uh, next piece of content. I really appreciate <clears throat> all you guys. I mean, at the end of the day, all you guys are doing is promoting the event. It's going to be really sure. fun. It's the only game in town uh, for the quarterfinals. And so I really appreciate it. And thanks for taking yeah. the time to come on here, dude. You the man. Absolutely. I also do want to mention. Yes. Um, I'm bringing Micah out to Greenville this weekend. We're going to do full behind the scenes. Ooh. During the quarterfinals. On awesome. So awesome. We're going to get the YouTube going. You guys will be able to see everything. So I would awesome. appreciate it. If we get awesome. Awesome. Subscribers will, it just, over there. will it just be you or he'll be doing a full behind the scenes of the entire event? Uh, specifically me, but we'll make sure that everyone's involved. We'll get interviews and we'll awesome. talk to people as long as they're cool with that. So, yeah, I think everyone will be cool with that. Unfortunately, uh, the guy we were sending out to do the behind the scenes, um, he, uh, his wife's pregnant, so he needs to stay close to oh, home. Yeah, Patrick. So, yeah. So tell Micah, uh, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing it and, uh, I'm sure you'll get cooperation from everyone. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. So appreciate you all. All right, dude, Dallin. Thank you. Talk to you soon, buddy. Later. Talk to you soon. All right. Hey, oh, and thanks for bringing Fee. It's going to be oh, yeah, absolutely. going to be a great show with her and um, uh, Lindsay Lane. It's going to be dope. Yeah, they're going to crush it. They're going to go at each other's throats, I'm sure. All right, dude. Have a awesome. good day. Later. Later. Uh, Lindsay Lane and uh, Fee Sagafi will be going head to head, and uh, the Glinton podcast is giving a thousand, one thousand dollars to the winner. $1,000. That was crazy. Crazy generous of the Glinton podcast. Uh, if those of you don't know, uh, Garrett Glinton and her wife, Colleen, hosted the show a couple Saturdays ago. Hopefully they'll be hosting another one uh, soon. I don't know. Uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie Gannon, when people have fun with you, it's really uh, usually a sign of affection. I, I hear you, but man... Uh, I mean, there's, the, the, I mean, this one's, this one's crazy. That's the kind of thing. If your wife sees that picture and then she can't get that picture of of your face out of her head, could have ill effects. This one's just ridiculous. This one actually makes me uncomfortable. And the picture of uh, Taylor's insane. Imagine how giddy uh, you must be when you post something like that. Like right before Dallin posts that, he must be so giddy like to release that to the world. Uh, Jason had a funny one today, actually. Actually, let me see if I can find what Jason posted in his story. 
uh, Jason is set posts a uh, video. <clears throat> this is Jason Hopper's account. Here's a video of Jason um, setting up a. Uh, he says, "I'm excited to host, host Colton Mertens at the CrossFit Crash this week. Just making sure everything is good to go for him." And he's setting up a pull-up bar for Colton. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Taylor gonna finger bang the world. <clears throat> Jake Chapman, where are all the uh female uh where are all the funny female athletes? Hmm. Danielle Brandon's pretty funny. Uh, Jamie Dorn, uh, this is all such a step up from when Dallin tried to poke the bear wearing Jason's old football team shirt. Uh, Judy Reed, uh, go get yourself a Guardian shirt from Vindicate. A Guardian shirt, what's that? No, get yourself a Sevon podcast shirt from Vindicate. Sean Lenderman, uh, Jake, you know women can't play like that. Oh, Fuslier. Good point. Wow. Man, she may. Wow. What? I wonder what she's up to. Let's just look at her Instagram account. She may be at the top of the heap. I would. I need to have her on again. Rebecca Fuslier. I hope she'll come on again. I feel I feel like every time she comes on, there's like some sort of backlash. <clears throat> but she's a great guest. The show does does great numbers. Let's see what uh, Rebecca's up to. So for people like her uh, going to the semifinals, I wonder if it's going to be extra hard for her, right? Because she's a she's been a bubble athlete for so long. She's doing her thing. <laughs> she makes training look fun. 315,000 followers. Dang. A little recap of my favorites that we didn't post from the open. Wow, look at this jumping. Yeah, she's funny. I could see her doing WWE. Deadlifting. That a girl. Oh, that's another good point. Uh, Seth, uh, Alexis Raptus is funny. Yep. All right. I'll give you that. That's two. That's two. That's a good idea for um, uh, these shows that have multiple guests on, like Get With The Programming has that game show. Pedro has that. Um, pick three funny girls. I wonder if they can be funny together. Who else? Who, who's one more? Ariel's, Ariel's very creative. Ariel Lowen. Very creative. But Rebecca and Alexis are funny. Uh, dildo, I would fight a rabid grizzly bear in a handicapped bathroom stall with nothing but a shake weight strapped to my forehead as a weapon just to hear Alexis wrap this fart through a walkie-talkie. <clears throat> I guess I can't take that back. Listen, I don't read these beforehand. Uh, do a version of Kill Tony. Mm. Show is so uncomfortable. Do you get used to it? Like, if you watch the show, I was thinking that maybe if I watched the show over and over, I was feeling a little uncomfortable watching it. And my wife's like, because I was watching it last night, and uh, my wife was like, the the people who, who come on there know, I mean, they know ahead of time, right? They had this Assyrian lady on uh, last night who had to do a 60-second skit. It was her second time on. 
And she, she looked like a man. She looked like a tranny. And, uh, yeah, it was a trip. Oh, Emily Rolf is funny. Emily, the, the thing, it, very good point. Emily Rolf is funny and sharp and witty. Oh, that, so that's the show. Wow, that's a great idea for a show for Pedro. Uh, Lexus Raptus, Emily Rolf, and uh, Rebecca Fuslier. All right, that's pretty good. I bet, I bet you um, uh, Shelby Neal... Uh, when she comes out of her shell, she'll be funny too. I, I I don't watch Kill Tony. I watched it yesterday. It's the second time I've watched it in, in three or four years. I, you know why I watched it? I'll be completely honest. I was just thinking, oh, I need to find some comedians to have on the show. It's been a while. And I got I got um, Hans Kim and David Lucas from that show the first time I watched it. And then I saw Tucker and Joe Rogan were on it. But man, dude, it is awkward. It, um, Tucker looked awkward. Joe looked awkward. The only person who wasn't awkward was... Uh, there was this black dude on the show who was a, who was a returning stand-up. And he, he wasn't awkward. And the Tony dude wasn't awkward. Everyone else was just... That's the best part, the awkwardness? All right. If you say so. <laughs> I guess I don't like horror movies either. Do you like horror movies, Mason? I don't like horror movies. Oh, Cam Patterson. Yeah. Dude, can you understand that guy? I couldn't understand. I could only understand. At one point, I looked over to my wife. I'm like, are you having trouble understanding him? She said, yeah. Man, he's hard to understand. He needs one of those computers, but he was funny. He was funny and sharp and he was comfortable. I, I was, I was, I was super comfortable around him. Yeah. I, I, horror movies. I don't enjoy horror movies. I don't enjoy horror movies or just like, um, I don't know. Oh, there was another, there was another dude who was uh, comfortable. It was this androgynous looking Mexican dude was on the show, but he had been on before too. Enrique. Enrique something or another. I can't remember. So there's that. Oh, someone just texted me and said my show's hilarious. That's fucking awesome. That's exactly what I need to hear. Oh, yeah. Enrique Chacon. Yeah. Enrique Chacon. Um, the, I, I guess that's the, I, I guess that show falls, that Kill Tony show falls under podcasts and it's the largest live podcast on YouTube. Which is, um, interesting. Oh shit. Please, please. Oh, please tell me I have this. I wanted to show you guys this clip I saw that I just saw it this morning. Um, let me see if I can, um, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, it, it was a theme of, it was a theme from like a year or two ago where I was basically saying like, Hey, the, the irony is that the only people who can save that it's going to, it was, it was during COVID and I was like, Hey, we're going to have to deal with, it's going to have to be someone who's just completely fucking obese that comes out and says, Hey, this is our fault. We know it's only us who are fucking dying. People who fucking smoke cigarettes, like they're going out of style and ch chain smoke and chain drink Coca-Cola and that the rest of you don't need to worry about it and fuck the lockdowns. We will take personal accountability and responsibility. Stop taking the injections. Like I was like, Hey, we need someone to just, we, we need a whole horde of those people like 10,000 fat motherfuckers to come out and say that. And and that's the exact same thing that needs to happen with uh, DEI and racism. It just needs to be just a whole fucking horde of really fucking self-confident, melanated people who are like, hey, dude, we know that racism only lives between the ears and uh, quit it. Like, we don't care. Like, fuck it. Stop it. Stop with the DEI shit. Stop feeling sorry for us. Like, that's the only way. 
because we are in some sort of weird uh, version of a, uh, a civil war right now. Some cultural, some cultural fucking civil war. Unfortunately, a shitload of people are fucking dying also. And the effects are crazy how they trickle down. The Boeing thing is another fucking disaster. And then we got, to, you know, witnessing it firsthand with our own beloved CrossFit. But this, this was great. The, the problem with this is for people who aren't um, Christians or, or who don't um, believe in God, this, this shit, for the vast majority of them, this shit fucking bugs them. I wish they could just get over that part. And just be like, hey, it doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. The shit, the shit works. Um, no, uh, vindicate. Sevon, did you did you see uh, Glinton Things' latest uh, podcast about their school and DEI and CRT? Uh, no. Yeah, I wish you'd have done that on my podcast. I'll go over and check it out. <clears throat> yeah, we need people like her to speak out. Okay, uh, here we go. Listen, listen to this. This is great. Good percentage of people will not accept an offer with a company that doesn't have intentional DEI programs and initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, Pastor. Uh, okay, so Pre uh, preach on, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a few things. If if DEI works anywhere, it has to work everywhere. Let me tell you where DEI does not work: the NBA and the NFL. Let's, where, where are the Asian, Latino, and Hispanic basketball and football players? Where are the black guys in the National Hockey League? Those businesses are performance-based. It really comes down to, Dr. Phil, the issue of justice. And if you really want to go deep to the heart of this, and when I say that DEI treats the symptom but not the sickness, America is in a new civil war right now. The first civil war was the North versus the South. The new civil war is a war of ideologies concerning justice. And it's really going to come down to who gets to define what justice is, whether that's biblical justice or social justice. When moral law stands alone and, and DEI initiatives are based upon that, somebody gets to pretend that they are God. That's a problem. It's, it's, uh, it's fascinating, too. As we know that the entire South, those were the Democrats and the entire North were the Republicans and not a single Republican owned a slave. And. We know who won the North won. And we know that the war was uh, civil wars primarily fought over the fact that they knew the slavery thing was coming to a head, that it was either going to go one way or another, that the country couldn't be split. And so the war was fought and the North won, the Republicans won. And here we are all over again. And the Democrats are overtly racist. But because it's supposedly on the side of the people that had been formerly oppressed, this time it's okay. And they want to take away the rights of the individual and give them to groups. And when I say this shit out loud, I cannot believe this is a fucking reality in 2024. It's so clear. Uh, uh, Brady, Brady Libby, uh, can you imagine turning down a job because the company didn't have DEI department? Fucking <laughs> crazy. Hey, the truth, the, the absolute truth is this. If someone does that, you don't want that person. That is not a hardworking person. Here's the thing. If you're a boss and you run a company, you don't want, if someone asks about uh, paternity leave, days off, vacation, any of that shit, you don't want that person. There's a ton of reasons. The, the fact is, is if, if someone walks into a place, if a, if a, if a 22 year old boy walks into a place and he's five foot nine, 165 pounds. And on his resume, it said that he was a, a, a high school wrestler for four years and um, that he goes to church, that he loves going to church. That's your hire. If the same kid walks in 
and he's 200 pounds overweight and he um is uh, uh he, he's proud because he's part of the local blm chapter that is not your hire and not for any reasons because of the affiliations with those groups or because of political ideology or nothing like that but just the fact that those are markers that show that like you're going to have someone who plays the victim who gets sick uh who can't who can't be as efficient i mean i mean it's just so it, 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 it's not it's not discrimination or prejudice it's discernment to as you as a as a, a employer of just trying to get the best work out of someone if you, you if someone if you were picking a car to win the uh, uh uh just pick a race the daytona 500 and you had a, a legit daytona 500 car and then a honda accord and then a um a toyota pickup truck what would you pick Uh, Augustus Link, um, uh, 23 years old, 5'11", 200 pound, wrestled through high school, one year college, does CrossFit and goes to church. Yeah, thank you. Please. No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. Dude, you really don't know enough about the people that go to ch church. You think they're all hardworking saints. No, that's not true. I don't think that they're all hardworking saints. I don't think that they're all hardworking saints. But let's just look at our previous guest, Dallin Pepper. Full-blown Bible beater, works hard. Great body. Hey, dude, I did just list that as, a, as one of my criteria. But what I'm saying is it, it, I'm not suggesting that everyone who goes to church is great. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm not suggesting, hey, dude, I knew tons of bad kids that wrestled. We, you can choose any one of those things. I know fat people who are the fucking hardest workers I've ever fucking met. Yeah, Jeffrey Birchfield. Here's another one. Don't hire a smoker or vapor either. How many productive hours are lost to smoke breaks? Yeah, that's one guy. That's but but you also Pat said that you're also talking about yeah that one guy. When you say that they're all not all saints who go to church, you're also talking about that one guy. Uh, Matt Fraser is not an atheist. I think he 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 went through the uh, uh, twelve step program. Yeah, listen, listen. That's another good thing, Pat. I'll, I'll um if you if you walk into a fucking bar. If you walk into a bar and it's a uh, and, and you see a hardworking bartender, that is probably a good fucking hire. That is bartender. I, that is a good fucking hire, especially if you go to the bar every day for fucking a year and you realize the bartender is not a drunk and that they're always there. That is a good worker. That is a hardworking person. I think bartenders are good to choose from, too. Uh, caller, hi. Sevy, how's it going? It's Plumber. Hey, what's up, dude? Uh, not much. Just wanted to call in. You were talking about hiring people, and uh, it's funny you used the 22-year-old kid reference. Um, I now write – I was an intern last year at my place, and then I took the guy – or the guy that I was interning under ended up leaving, so I took his job. But this year I'm getting um, emails from people now wanting to intern with me. Um. And this one guy had a pretty good resume with like, it said that he was working at Nike and then, um, but like just in the store, nothing like training wise. And then he had like a couple of shadowing experiences, but then I asked him about it. Um, and I asked him, I'm like, well, do you like, are you training for anything? Do you exercise? Like, what do you do? And he's like, well, I work out, you know, two to three times a week just to stay in shape. And I'm like, you're applying to be a human performance trainer and you, like train two to three days a week yeah and what would you what did you want to hear fuck dude i'm I mean, obsessed i love this shit i love moving my body you you have to hear that right, right. like if the coach doesn't hear that like hey, the hey people that come to and how dumb is he for not knowing that it's an iq test he failed the uh the superficial credentials and the iq test well and he wants to go and, and he was pre-physician assistant, which it's kind of like odd, but I get it. He wanted the experience and he wants to be in sports, but it's like, 
dude, like at least fucking lie to me, right? Like <laughs> tell me you train five days a week. Or, or hey, dude, I train two days a week, I, I, but really I want to train five days a week. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I, I'm just like, you can't expect, if you're, not, if you're not passionate about it, right, it's not one of those jobs where you're going to make it. Yeah. It, it, it's just, I mean, you, you want to pick, you want to hire people who are reliable, who are reliable. Hey, yeah. there's even a pro. There's even a profile for um for people who you know who are gonna uh uh um uh apply for workman's comp. Like you know them. I used to work yeah. at this home for disabled adults, and there was I could just profile people. I could be like that person's a workman's comp. Gonna be on workman's comp before before they're here a year. And I was I was mm -hmm. fucking like twelve and zero. It's like so. It's so obvious. So fucking hmm. obvious. He also he like. Towards the end, he asked, and it was kind of, I, I mean, I guess it's a valid question, but he's like, well, what would like, you know, what would my role look like? Like, what would I be doing? And I'm like, I, I can tell you what it's going to look like over the phone all you want, but like, you're not there yet. You haven't even seen the building and like two, whatever I tell you, it won't really explain a whole lot. Yeah. That's right? another thing. Yeah. I, like, I don't really, I, I, I all those questions are, are red flags for me. It's all like you show those, up and, all those questions are red flags for me. What's your role look like? You show up and you say yes to yes, the first thing. And then exactly. You say yes. Exactly. Yeah. I will do fucking anything. I want to show you. I'm the fucking. I I I just want to get my foot in the door. I'm so excited. I know what you do over there, Will. It's so awesome. If I can glean a, a little bit of knowledge or insight from what you do, that's great. I play, I, I have nothing else going on. I don't own a dog. I don't have a girlfriend. I'm just pumped. I'm just in this that, stage of my funny. life where I want to be a fucking sponge. And, 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 my, uh, and, and you know, I, I do only work out two days a week, but I want to do five. Did you think I could work out with you a couple days a week? How about that? I actually, uh, I hired my, um, one of my friends or one of the, my classmates, uh, on as an intern this year. Um, but brought him on, but he hold, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. Um, hold on one second. We'll get right back to this. So, so Pat, I didn't even read this whole thing that you wrote, but I want to say this disregard anything I said. All I'm saying is how about this big picture? People should use the, the, there are, there is discernment you can use when hiring people. I have my discernment. You have your discernment, Pat. If you're not using your discernment, then I don't know how you're hiring people. I think we can all agree that you should use discernment. And I think that the worst kind of discernment you can use is the color of their skin, unless you're picking for a sports team, or um, or uh, or uh, whose um, who's genitalia that they want to put in their mouth relative to their own, unless you're shooting porn. And besides those two things, I don't think I don't think that that should be a, a call for discernment of choosing to hire people. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, physical, you can physical you can pick whatever you content. yeah. If you don't like church people, Pat, you have a bad experience with them. You think they're a bunch of fucking losers. Fine. Don't use that as your discernment. Big picture. Let's go up to 100,000 feet. I'm saying that there are things that crazy, brilliant, humble people like myself can use to discern how people are going to behave. And the patterns are easy to spot. Thank you. Okay, well, go ahead. So the buddy of yours you just uh, hired. Uh, yeah, he's been working with me since January. But uh, it's funny you said the dog and the girlfriend. Yeah. He had a girlfriend. And then he's like, I think I'm going to get a dog. And I'm like, don't get a dog. And he got the dog, I just, but, but it was funny that yeah. you, you said those two things. Cause that's, it's funny when you're 20 something, right? Those are the things that it's like, Oh, what do I do? But he's doing fine with it. He's he, making it work. Yeah. I don't, I, this is going to come out totally crazy, but, but here's the thing. Uh, I even just said it on the show right now. So, um, my beloved Patrick Rios fucking a, such a G Pat. If you're listening, this is not a dig at you at all. He fucking murdered it. The Wadapalooza behind the scenes he did was fucking revolutionary. He's a beast. And he has a fucking wife that I absolutely love who I got to meet, who's the greatest support ever. So when I when I see Pat, I'm like, or uh, Patrick Rios, I'm like, wow, you got this fucking wife. And it could, like I said, but like the way I example I gave, it could have been a ding, but he got a fucking muse. Like this chick is mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. She had never filmed mm -hmm. before, and he just brought her to the games, which would be a red flag, but handed her a camera. She worked her fucking ass off and got a ton of great footage for us. She brings food. She makes. She drove the car. She just makes sure she she got in where she fit in. Yeah. Right. This bitch fucking yeah, that's rock. But that being said. He can't go to he can't go to fucking uh um the Taylor Self versus the world uh because 
he, she caught a load <laughs> of baby batter and she's pregnant now. So now he got to stay home oh, with her. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So you know what I mean? So it's like it just those yeah. are the those are the things. Um, and I so think- I could have put if he would have gone there and and um and and filmed that, I could have put that behind a paywall and fucking milked another twenty thousand dollars from the listeners. Yeah. So um. So, so you, it's just big picture kind of, shit. Yeah. How you talked about discernment? Yeah. Right. If you're if you're in a position right where you're where you are hiring and firing people and bringing people onto a team or looking at that, right? That means whatever, right? Your company trusts you and expects you to use your discernment to bring good people in. Right. Right. Or, right. and hopefully your company isn't one that does it based off of, right? Skin color. Pigment of your skin. Right. Right. Like right. that's, it should, it should right. be always performance based and right. what's going to fit your needs best. Right. But that being said, if you can't watch them play basketball before you pick the team, you pick the black dudes, yeah. the Asian dudes, the white dudes, and then the Mexicans. Sorry, but that's the order you pick them in. Yeah, I mean that, that's fair. But that if you can't, but fair. if you can't see them play, then you throw color out the door. Exactly. And so then you can't. So you can't show, see. Show so you numbers. can't. So you can't see people at work work first. But if the guy mm-hmm. says he he has a dog and it's pregnant and it's about to have babies you know that this yep. motherfucker is going to miss a lot of work. This dude tells yep. you he's had his fourth booster. You know this motherfucker gets sick a lot. Yeah. All right, Sevy, I got to roll. Good All right, talking love to you. Yeah, See thanks you, for calling. All right, bye. Yeah, Asian basketball players. I'm not, not at the pro level, but at that, at that, at that, uh, at that, I'm not talking about the pro level, but at that fucking uh, street park level. Yeah, Asians all day. Asians. Here's the thing, too. The black guys will get tired. Black guys and white guys will get tired. Mexican guys get you a lot of fouls. Yeah, Asian, Asian guys like you're doing a p- pickup game at the park and you got to pick dudes, pick a nice, nice mixture of uh, of the blacks and Asians, skinny Asian guy, point guard. I don't even know basketball. I just made all that up, but I felt like I sounded smart as shit. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me how accurate I am. Uh, see, Johnny, Mexican guys do foul a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I was at the, when Yao Ming was just a kid, I was at the, uh, you know how weird I am. I, I, I was, um, I was at the, uh, rec center at UC Santa Barbara, University of California, Santa Barbara. And he was at the pool. It was during the summer. There was a Jordan camp there. He came, he got there a few days early. I had no fucking idea who he was. And I was playing Frisbee in the field. I was playing Frisbee in the field that's adjacent to the pool at the rec center. And, and there was, there's a fence there and um, no one was in the pool. It was, it was kind of early in the morning, eight or 9 AM. It was during the summer and I was playing Frisbee and I saw him walk out onto the pool deck and lay in a uh, a pool chair. And I just fuck I I I I think I, I when I saw him I thought that like his uh is is your femur the one um that's between your knee and your hip is that your femur bone? Whatever that bone is that's that's like in there with your hamstring and your quads. I thought that he, that bone in his body looked like it was as tall as me. Just that one bone. I remember just seeing him. I walked over to the fence. He, he was fucking nine feet away from me, 10 feet away from me, the chair. I walked over to the fence and just grabbed the bars, turned my back to the guys I was playing Frisbee with and just, uh, um, looked in the bars, stared at him. Like he was a zoo animal. Yes. That's the femur. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Carr. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Your hair is outstanding. Oh, my God. I'd like to see more pictures of you. My goodness. Hubba, hubba. Red hair. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a trip. He was ginormous. This this 
this must have been like 2000. Could that be right? Was Yao a kid when he was 2000? Yeah, it's probably 2000. Oh, uh, uh, who's ginormous? Uh, um, uh, hi, Audrey. Um, Heidi looks like the uh, Heidi looks like Kiki Dixon there, like the non OnlyFans version of the Kiki before she 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 whatever happened to her happened to her. It's a great you look. That's a great picture, you guys. Hi, Audrey. Uh, Yao Ming's ginormous. Yao is a giant. ginormous oh uh listen mason mitchell uh both of them are christian who who are who are both christian uh heidi and um audrey or uh yao ming and and myself i would consider myself christian Just don't believe in god uh call her hi hey savvy hi it's jess rolls of photography oh hey what's up hey savvy hey so i think you have to turn i think you have to turn down the youtube we have a crazy echo oh sorry my bad my bad how are you dude i'm living the dream i was so excited to get yeah Dallin. you are I was, man i was so excited to get Dallin on this morning because uh, i've been bugging him like at 10 o'clock at night for a few days being like hey can you come on in the morning i was just being a douche just bullying him and then finally <laughs> last night he's like fine i'll come on but I knew, I knew that like, I mean, these guys are addicted to their, or not addicted, they're disciplined to their schedule. So it was really cool that it came on and I'm, and, sure. I'm, and I'm getting really nervous about this week coming up. Like, like, but good. Oh, nervous. you shouldn't be nervous. Good You're going to crush it, dude. I know, but I'm still nervous. Like I just wanted to go off without a hitch. Oh, for sure. That's how I feel. whenever I go to like shoot a wedding, I'm always like super nervous. And then I shoot a wedding and then I'm like, oh, well, it's so yeah. it's no big deal. Yeah. Just like, another day. Like you're going to get home and your card's going to fail or something. Don't say that. Okay, fine. Right. <clears throat> no, I was so I was calling just because uh you were talking about um just like hiring people and all the things. Maybe I didn't catch the whole conversation. I was driving home from the gym. But, uh I know every job that I've ever applied for um if, whenever I put on my resume like you know, so I grew up on a dairy farm and the very first thing people ask like, "Oh, you're you're a dairy farmer like you you know like all the things like with that you get up and early in the just, morning you show up yeah, you're dude. strong yes yeah yes you know how yeah. you 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 can learn new shit have you ever used a pallet jack before no can you learn no problem like dude. You, you're a self-starter you're not afraid of shit shit can smell shit can get hard there can be flies yeah you're totally you're eminently capable totally right dairy farmer hire yeah I don't give a fuck. And yeah. that's all I need. And by the way, for any people who don't know, at, like, so at that point, you don't need to be a Christian. You don't need to be fucking working out. You don't need to be skinny. I already know. I already know. How long were you a dairy farmer? Four years. Why'd you quit? The farm went out of business. Hired. <laughs> fucking hired. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So that's, yeah. that's why, like, that's why, like, you know, with, like, um, with Colt Mertens, like, people... <laughs> People just don't understand, like, farm kids, just, we're different. We're just, yeah. you know, we're built different. But, no, yeah. we seriously are. Yeah. Like, I mean, Colton, I, he, he gets up early in the morning to go work on the farm and then goes and trains the way he does and then probably has to go do more farm work later. Like, dairy farming, like, you have to get up at, like, 4 a.m. I go up, get up at 4 a.m. to go to the gym at 5 a.m., come home, milk cows, and then go on with my day and then milk cows again at night. Like it's, it's a constant, you're constantly working. Um, so most people, he, you if know, they woke up in the morning and the first thing they did, they stepped in shit. They would fucking call in sick and their day would be ruined. Oh yeah. A dairy farmer yep. stepped in shit. You're like, today's going to be a good day. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I look at Pat Lang, even yeah. Pat Lang. Look at look at me. Look at me in twelve daily doses, just fucking open mouth kissing each other. I'd fire a, a, a farm kid. I'd hire a farm kid all day. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not many around. Absolutely. Now there's now 
Yeah. There's a certain age, though, where the farm kid turns into an alcoholic. <laughs> now, listen, they, these farm kids have a short life. Listen, you got to get them early. I mean, you do. You got to get them but early. But when you find really good, hardworking ones, then that's yeah. they just know how to work hard, and that's about it. Uh, uh, Rosie, uh, Extra know? Sloppy wants to chime in. Nothing is done on your time on a farm. It's all done now because shit happened, and we have to fix it now. Doesn't matter yep. what it takes. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah. And that's just like in workouts, uh, you know, like if a workout gets really hard, like I don't complain about the workout. I don't complain. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard. You just put your head down and get the shit done. Yeah. Someone needs you know? some animal needs a fucking 45 slug to the head. No problem. Got you. <laughs> I'll let my brother <laughs> handle that. Uh... <laughs> anyway, I was just chiming in, had to give some farm talk, you know, all right. Thank you. Love you. So good to hear from you. Absolutely. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye. Rosie from Rosie Photography. I worked side by side with her at the games last year. It was good shit. I don't know if I could handle the fucking slug in the, in the animal's head. I'm not made different. I'm so normal. Remember missionary is my favorite position. They also studied the way gay and straight people talk. Hey, how's it going? I drive a Chevy C10. Sounds straight to me. And it is straight. I'm saving the world by driving an electric vehicle. Gay. <laughs> they also studied the way gay and straight people talk. Hey, how's it going? I drive a Chevy C10. Sounds straight to me. And it is straight. I'm saving the world by driving an electric vehicle. Gay. Well, there you go. There you go. Now we know. I saw the nicest Tesla ever. I'm not even a fan of Teslas. I saw one yesterday. God, it was nice. It was so stout. It looked like a kind of a stretched out 911. And it was uh it was uh, uh, a really uh it was a matte green. It was so nice. God, it was nice. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, damn it. I screwed this bit up. Okay. Uh, the, um, the, the maker, um, Liz Collins is coming on the show. She's the producer of The Fall of Minneapolis. If you haven't seen that movie, you have to see that movie. You have to see that movie. Liz Collins. It's on YouTube. It's free. You'll be so happy you saw it. And then if you want a, a, a wild book to read, read her book. Um, I forget the name of the book, but you can just look up Liz Collins Fall of Minneapolis and and, and listen to the audiobook. It's it's such a fast listen, but it will blow you away. And for those of you who live in Minnesota or Minneapolis, brace yourself because man, you live in some corrupt shit. Man, you guys make California you guys make California look good. What a fucked spot to live in. Quit jerking off. I don't want to stop. But I do it so much that one of my buddies told me, Holden, you have to quit choking your chicken. I'd never heard this before, but I choked mine so much that I gave it a name. You guys want to hear the name? Yeah. I named it George Floyd. Um, <laughs> the go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I loved that joke, by the way. Uh, I don't think you need a tag on that. Me and Rich Voss made uh, five seconds of eye contact after that, going like that. That's a pretty good sign. What does that mean? So what does that mean? Uh, you don't need a tag on that. They kept talking about jokes yesterday and, and it, like, um, like, uh, you know how you talk in gr about grammar and you'll be like, Oh, that's a verb or that's a subject or that's a preposition. They kept referring to jokes that have tags. What does that mean? Um, what is that? What is that? Oh, dude, you are fucked. Ken, if you're in Minnesota, you're fucked. Dude, your you your shit is so fucked. Well, until I see the movie about California, your shit is fucked. Oh, what does that mean? A tag, a tag, a tag line, a disclaimer? No, 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 no. It's it's some it's something about it's some component of comedy. Um, that the Tony guy kept talking about it. Uh, he when he was talking to another comic, he's like, "Oh, you've been on the show before, and you didn't ha you didn't have any tags in your setup." tags what are tags 
a follow-up line after the joke. A follow-up line after the joke. Tag is a follow. Like, like what a chaplain said, a, a great joke only comes after a good joke. Like, was Tim Murray a tag? Like, uh, um, Colton and Jake Berman were the joke, and then the tag was Tim Murray? A laugh line... It's a laugh line that follows the original punchline of a joke. A tag are the comments you say after the punchline to keep the laugh going. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it's so it's just a follow up joke that piggyback piggybacks off the first joke. Okay, so so okay. There was a uh, there was a guy who had a great one then yesterday. Okay. Uh, saying saying the joke was already complete. It didn't need the tag at the end. I uh, uh Sevon, maybe Greg can take you to a comedy show. Um. Wow, you choke the chicken so much that you call it George Floyd. <laughs> have to quit jerking off. I don't want to stop. But I do it so much that one of my buddies told me, Holden, you have to quit choking your chicken. I'd never heard this before. But I choked mine so much that I gave it a name. You guys want to hear the name? Yeah. I named it George Floyd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I love that joke, by the way. I love that joke, too. Uh, um, 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 um. Uh, so Liz Collins, the uh, producer of The Fall of Minneapolis, will be coming on the show. Going to blow, blow, blow your mind. Going to blow your mind. Now listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Pro-Palestinian Muslim says quiet part out loud. Sharia, quiet part out loud. Pro-Palestinian Muslim says quiet part out loud. Sharia law coming to Canada. You will have no choice. And then, and then the interviewer is going to ask a question. What would happen if uh, there were gay people in Gaza? Listen, listen to this. Listen, 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 listen. To a gay couple in Palestine, sir. What? What would happen to a gay couple in Gaza? They executed according to Islamic law. Islam doesn't in endorse gays. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. Just what would happen to a gay couple in Gaza? They would be executed immediately under Sharia law. Maybe you didn't hear. Maybe you guys didn't hear that. Maybe you didn't hear. It. Maybe listen, listen. Gay couple in Palestine, sir. What? What would happen to a gay couple in Gaza? They executed according to Islamic law. Islam doesn't in endorse gays. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. Just like Canada doesn't endorse a lot of things. So Did he say gayism? It, 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 Islamic law doesn't endorse gayism? That's a pretty cool word. What happened to a gay couple in Palestine, sir? What? What would happen to a gay couple in Gaza? They executed ex according to Islamic law. Islam doesn't in endorse gays. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. Just like Canada doesn't endorse a lot of things. So would you like to see Sharia law in Canada replace Canadian law? At some point it will. You know, because we, are, we, are, we have families, we are making babies. You're not. You're, 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 your population is going down the slum, right? And by 2060, by 2060, according to Pew Research Institute, your research, by 2060, Muslims will be the biggest religious group the world over. What are you going to do then? Actually, to oppose Sharia is even then? Well, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the honesty. We don't usually get that. One day we can have a Muslim majority nation here in Canada. Right in your face. What happened to a gay couple in... Oh, my God. So that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, whatever, what, whatever you want to say, who the puppets are, who are running the show, and there's no difference between the right and the left, and all that stuff okay cool I, uh, fine there's there's the hundred thousand foot view fine but don't forget that these people in gaza 86 percent of them thought that october 6th or 7th whatever the fucking day that happened was totally cool 
and that it was United Nations money teaching those people that Jews are to be killed and that that, that country uh, on a regular basis, their leaders are there in Iran and everywhere chant death to America and, and, and this, and this guy, this guy, whatever that guy, wherever he went, uh, he, he lets you know, remember, execute the gays. Um, so, uh, <laughs> listen, uh, um, uh, most, most Muslims don't endorse Sharia law. Uh, first of all, you don't know that you, you don't know most Muslims. I would probably argue that you're way, 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 way off there. But second of all, um, most people in this country don't endorse DEI either. I think. Uh, what, Sevi, what's your point? I don't know. I don't know what my point is. I don't have a point. Do I need one? What's your point? Uh, Jews are not in a sad state around the world. What the problem? Uh, most Muslims endorse other Muslims. The Muslims with testosterone endorse Sharia. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Most Nazis did not endorse the uh, killing of the Jews. Did you know that? Uh, the, 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 the Nazis are not in a sad state around the world. What's their problem? Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know what the, Pat's deleting comments. It, it, I'm okay with people deleting comments. Just so you know, I'm okay with people getting called out for deleting comments, but I'm okay with deleting comments. I don't personally don't delete comments, but I would delete a comment. Like if I called your mom a whore and then I found out that she read it and I felt bad, I'd probably delete it. Oh, Kenneth DeLapp, a, a fine piece of insight. Uh, I heard most Nazis weren't even Nazis. They were just doing what they're told. That's awesome. I know you're not deleting comments, Pat. I'm just saying. How dare you accuse me of deleting comments? Uh, Judy Reed, I delete mine sometimes if, if, if I have a huge grammar error, et cetera, and retype it. Yeah, well, that's a... We've talked about this before. That's a Chinese uh, affliction. I wonder if I have to go. There's more I want to show you guys. Sharia law. Okay, here's this. You want to, you want to balance it out? You got. I know. I know those those fringe crazy Sevon podcast listeners will love this one. Here we go. Here we go. I should have anomaly on soon. And I haven't made that many Instagram reels recently is I just feel like Republicans are complete controlled opposition. Most of the things that people are talking about is just pointless and circular. And I don't feel like arguing in the comment section. So I've just been going to the gym. Yes, Joe Biden sucks. He's awful. But the last president infringed on the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. And nobody seems to care that the entire Republican Party all this year is warp speeding through anti-Semitism hate speech laws, which create hate speech phrases, are begging to police rhetoric, create safe spaces, and revise free speech policies. And one of the hate speech phrases literally includes the word Jesus. Personally, I feel like Republicans, including Trump, DeSantis, Kemp, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and pretty much all of them except for Thomas Massey, are so sold out that they're literally working to slow roll the outlawing of the Bible and Christianity in America. Sounds crazy, right? I believe it's happening. And I think that Republican commentators are incentivized to never talk about this topic and just constantly run you in circles. Because the second that they weigh in on this topic, they know that they'll probably get Candace Owens and they might not want to lose their stability, money, and fame. And for those wondering who are going to ask me, well, what about RFK? Don't care about him either. God bless the guy. He's pretty cool. But I don't think he's running a serious campaign to actually be the president this term. And all signs point to him selling out on this topic as well. Appreciate y'all. God bless. Have a good week. The reason I have uh, to, two things that I really like about this. Well, I like Anomaly, but uh, also, but. Um, making laws against hate speech is fucking batshit crazy. 
And uh, I like the fact that uh, he says he's going to the gym. Listen to this. I haven't made that many Instagram reels recently. Is I just feel like Republicans are complete controlled opposition. Most of the things that people are talking about is just pointless and circular. And I don't feel like arguing in the comment section. So I've just been going to the gym. So I've just been going to the gym. Deliver while wearing a wife beater. I know. I just love it. God, I love it. God, I love it. Oh, Pat, you, oh, I thought you would like what this guy said, uh, Doses. You think he's, he's just too far off? You think it, he's just out there? You think he's just like, I don't know what the word, I, don't, I can't think of anything that you, like, I don't know what the word is anymore. Like, if you're a flat earther, are you out there? You believe in the red shoes, are you out there? Like, I don't know, I don't even know what's out there anymore. I've lost my, I've lost my uh, context or relativity of what's crazy. Oh, he's a fear monger. I don't know. I thought that's that's weird. I misread you. I thought you I thought you would love that. Uh Bernie Gannon, all all a uh, problem is that all sides are using the same tactics, tricks, or influence. No one steps back to be an adult anymore. Hey, oh, someone made a comment earlier that uh Sousa only works out two days a week or something. First of all, I don't give a fuck, but second of all, because he's so fucking busy, but I don't think that's true. Excuse me. I don't think that's true at all. I got so much. I'm getting so much. I thought I was going to get fucking crazy shit from the Jason podcast. Um, uh, a guy walked up to me yesterday. Uh, a, a, a parent at the jiu-jitsu studio who who he, it was his first day there with this kid and he he walks up to me and goes oh i saw you i saw you on the uh, jason's podcast and i really liked it it's like wow i thought that was going to get me some fucking hate mail he's a black off the mat okay i need to take a break why do you need to take a break because my legs hurt mm, can you still run yes why are you crying there's a reason for the tears. Okay, I'm slowing down. There we go. Does it make you feel bad? You're not ready to quit. You got more energy. It's the emotions that's making you want to quit. So this is the place to get all of this out. Tears release stress hormones. The saying big boys don't cry is a lie. Every man I know who doesn't cry, cries in other ways. Can't keep a job. Always on the edge, ready to fight someone. I want you to get focused. Look at me. And you're going to fight and push through this lap. Do you understand? Good. Get back on the map. Run! Uh, what do you do now when you're overwhelmed with your emotions and you want to quit? I push through them and I don't let them control me. Good. Egypt, why are you off the map? Man, I, uh, my son Ari is the, uh, he's so fucking tough. And he's so good at jujitsu and he pushes so hard and he he's, and he's very emotional. He, um, he's very, uh, I don't know what the word is. I don't know if it's sensitive or not, but like I could say something and he'll start crying or, or birthday parties. He always cries when people sing happy birthday, he cries. Isn't that wild? Cause they're getting a year older. Somehow he's not, he's, that makes him emotional and I see it and, and he pushes through, he pushes through it all. But I see it and I'm just so excited every time I see him cry because I'm like, man, at some point he's going to figure out like an alchemist how to transform all of that emotional energy. Like right now it's it's just so – it's so uh, – it's his energy is so raw and and, uh, and and he's not at that age where the mindfulness is there to – observe emotions and so as they come up you, you're experiencing them right and so you just fully embrace that experience and you run with it just like anything like when they eat a cake or get a remote control car or win a prize they just really take their experiences to an enjoyment to the extreme and i see him doing that with his crying but man what a uh i'm so I, every time i see him cry i'm so excited about it i'm just like yeah i walk over to him like yeah you the man. Look at that emotion. Someday you're going to get that shit fucking like streamlined. 
You won't, you won't, you won't let that energy just get completely absorbed by emotion. He's such a good dude. My, my son, Ari. Anyway, I love, I love that. I love this uh, video. I love seeing just good people working with kids. It's awesome. Great stuff people sent me. Sometimes I worry about all the stuff people are sending me. It's just, it's just like fucked so much dark shit. But uh, here's another just great one. Here's another great one. You know, the Amish graduate school in eighth grade, and that's when the learning really begins. They learn to build, knit, run a farm, use tools, and start apprenticeships. And this comes after a childhood of doing business because the focus of their education is to get their kids ready for the real world. I'll never forget when I visited the Amish in Pennsylvania. There were eight-year-old kids running food stands by themselves, and there were thousands of customers. So they start young with reading, writing, penmanship, and math. They learn to speak three languages, and their first graders learn right alongside their eighth graders. In fact, the older kids are are expected to serve as mentors and chores and responsibility are just a part of the school day. In fact, there's no janitors because the children clean the school as the Amish use school to teach their children their culture. Because why would you send your kids to an institution that hates everything you believe in? You would think this is common sense. It's why I write books. Why would you send your kids to an institution that hates everything you believe in? How is anyone sending their kids to school? My God. Sebi, there's good schools out there. All right. All right. My, I'm sorry. All, all right. All right. All righty. All righty. I, 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 uh, I, all right. All right. I believe you. I'm, I'm, I believe you. 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 Sugar in a baby's brain is called ADHD. Sugar in an adult's brain is called dementia and Alzheimer's. Sugar in your eyes is called glaucoma. Sugar in your teeth is called cavities. Sugar on your skin is called aging. Sugar in your sleep is called insomnia. Sugar in your blood is called diabetes. Excess sugar in your body is called cancer. Sugar and alcohol kill good bacteria in your gut. So now that you know this, how do you detox from processed sugar? Probiotics with lactobacillus help metabolize sugar and increase the good bacteria in your gut. L-glutamine helps reduce sugar cravings. And obviously cutting back on processed and packaged snacks and foods. Sugar in a baby. I remember I was, uh, I was in South Africa and I was at this dinner with all these doctors. And there were these two, um, are they called, what are they called? Opt ophthalmologists? Is that? Uh, um, Ophthalmologists diagnose and treat all eye diseases. Okay, yeah. There's an H in ophthalmologist. O P H. Op Am I pronouncing that right? Ophthalmologist. It's O P H, T H. They don't need that H in there. Silent H. Ophthalmologist. I was at dinner with these two ophthalmologists, and the guy was saying that uh, one of the things that people notice from going in ketosis is. Uh, with the reduction of inflammation, the lenses in your eyes go back to the shape that they're supposed to be in. And so people's eyesight gets better. So I guess, uh, your cells hold more water if you eat too much sugar and it causes the bending of the uh, lenses in your eyes. Crazy. Uh, Christian, uh, uh, Christian, uh, Christian Kettler retarded probiotics equals waste of money. I've heard that too. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Mason Mitchell, I do insane amounts of sugar and eyes are uh, suddenly going to shit. I wonder how old you are too. My eyes do. My eyes are going through some sort of transformation. I've been going out more and more without my glasses. What sucks is I, what sucks is I actually enjoy wearing glasses. I don't know why. So why do you wear glasses, Savon? 
I don't know, but I, um, I, I, when I look at my phone now, I don't wear my glasses, which is a trip. I take off my glasses every time I look at my phone. Probably, probably from eating sugar. My lenses are all fucked up. Like I, I bent my lenses. I don't know. I quit sugar. I quit sugar, and my uh, vision markedly improved. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, thirty-eight. I think my eyes started doing some weird shit. That's when I like I started really the honkering down on prescription glasses. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Birchfield. After forty-five, the lenses begin to dry, uh, dry out, and the shape changes. Oh, interesting. Oh, uh, Chris, uh, Christian Kettler. There are peptides for that, Sevi. Oh, for uh, gut health. CA peptides. I did notice though that when I when I go into when I on my days that I fast, I do see better. My eyes feel better. So all right. Well, we covered all the bases today, I think. A little CrossFit, excuse me, some burping. Talked about sugar. Um, made fun of Muslims. Um, someone sent me this. This is kind of cool. Remember, remember that girl, the basketball girl, Caitlin Clark, who I didn't know who she was? Uh, Caitlin Clark officially gets drafted overall by the Indiana Fever. I guess that's a professional women's basketball team. Swipe to see the impact she's already having on the WNBA. Was this yesterday? She's six feet tall. She's 22 years old. Oh, uh, I guess that's the video of her getting uh, drafted. I, I'm uh, so Indiana last year, they national te last year. They had one nationally televised game. This, this, this professional team called Indiana fever, Indiana fever. That's the name of the fit team. Indiana fever. This, I don't know. That's a stupid name. Uh, and, and this year with this girl, Caitlin Clark, uh, they have, thir they have a contract for 36 televised games. Uh, so I guess people want to watch her. Th so that's a pretty big impact. And then check this out. A typical WNBA, uh, prices versus games against Indiana fever. So, uh, if you're, if you're, I guess there's a team called Chicago sky. I wonder if women's basketball sucks. The names are ridiculous. They have a, a um, Chicago sky. Normally the tickets to go see that fabulous pro team cost $25. But when this Caitlin Clark chick comes to town, it's $125. And there's a team in Las Vegas to watch women's basketball in Las Vegas, Las Vegas aces. That's, a, that's uh, okay. I dig that name. Um, it's normally $15 to see that team. Wow. That's cheap. But when, when Caitlin Clark comes to town, it's $114. And then there's a team called the New York Liberty. It usually costs $33 to see them play on average. But when Caitlin comes to town, it's $88. And then the uh, Phoenix Mercury, <laughs> go figure hottest city in America, maybe the world Phoenix Mercury, a uh, $23 normally to go see those chicks, uh, dunk, dunk. Uh, when Caitlin comes to town, it'll be 109. Oh, please. Women finally pull their their weight in professional sports. The fuck they do. This doesn't mean shit. This chick will fucking, this thing will be, I bet you her salary ends up fucking bankrupting the team she's on. This thing will just come and go. Like it's nothing. This is just the flavor of the week. We're one, we're, we're, no. I also saw, oh, I also saw Tyson Bajan reported to training camp. Did you guys see that? That's kind of cool. Uh, Chicago, uh, Chicago Bears. Let's see where, uh, oh, here it is right here. Chicago Bears, look at. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Don't mind if I do. 
It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, guys, I will be headed down to Carson. Oh, you want to hear something crazy? I, I have fucking no business saying this. Don't start a stampede. Here's two things, some things that you should know. I'm headed down to Carson for the semifinals. I will be filming the behind the scenes. Um, I have, uh, I think uh, JR and Taylor will be there also doing a games day podcast. So that show will be live, like from the venue. They may, they may even do it from the field. Um, and there is a good chance, some chance, there's a chance that I will be, but a lot of the seven podcast team will also be in Knoxville. Those tickets are on sale now. So you can buy those tickets now if you want to go. And there's a uh, plenty of uh, Airbnbs and hotels and tons of shit available in both places. I also heard, and I'm not supposed to say this, so don't get crazy, but that Greg is going to be doing a BSI event uh, near here, near my house. And uh, it's going to be a small event and it's going to be dope. And I'm going to be there for that too, for sure. And that is going to be a, that is going to be a fucking party. I'm telling you those two days. And I think he's going to make it available to the public, but it's going to be fucking quick and rabid. It's basically going to be a popularity contest. It's going to be basically just who you know and how to get in. I suspect, I don't even know if like an official list will open. But basically, we're going to film those. Uh, um, I think he's going to start tr wanting to try to do those regularly. And um, and he's going to do them in this area. And so he can start getting more and more footage of his lectures. His lectures are really getting tight and smooth. And basically, the whole thing's coming together sort of like the L1 came together. And uh, so him and Emily Kaplan... Um, have both let me know and they've given me a date for one that's going to pop up really quick around here. Heidi, you should text me. Um, and I'll try to figure out a way to get you out here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, yes. Uh, some dad just said, uh, sent me a text and said he would take my kids surfing at 1030. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Uh, I gotta call my wife and tell her that. These events that Greg has are so, um, they're just, they're just dope. I just can't explain it. It, it. It's so fun. Oh, shit. I called my own number. Jesus Christ. What a weird job I have that I have to call my wife and, and all, the, all the people I work with uh, get to hear the call. It's kind of a strange life I live. Oh, oh, Susan's coaching till eight. Can you fucking believe how many sponsors are reaching out? Can you believe how many people are reaching out? Hello. Hey. Hey. Oh. Right. Um, oh, I hear my my mom's there. Yeah, they're doing Armenian. They're doing Armenian. Am I on speakerphone? No, but you're in my ear, and I'm right next next to everyone. Oh God, it's, it's loud. Hey. Um. Sorry. Um. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Jeff just uh, texted me and said that they're going surfing at 1030. Surfing at 1030. Oh, cool. They so, don't have anything until one. Okay. But, but I'm such a jackass, like putting their wetsuits on and all that. I want to be there at 10 before them. So they don't have to like wait for us and shit. I want to leave here like at 930 and go down to the beach and just get set up and like get the boys already. So when he comes, he can just take them out in the water. Okay. All right. um, I'm so excited. Yeah, that will be stoked. Yeah, it's sunny as shit. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I, okay. I, mean, I, I just assume it's it's Capitola we're going to. Okay. But maybe just double check. But I can usually that's where they go. Okay. Okay. What, oh, is there any food left? Breakfast food? There's some eggs. And I can heat up some steak if you want. 
Okay. You're hungry. We should go see if the neighbors are still selling eggs. Okay. And buy their eggs. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love you. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Bye. All right. That's cool. I'm at the beach. I'm basically at the beach. I'm just two. I'm my, my road goes just straight into the beach. I don't know. Two miles at the most, just straight downhill. Two and a half miles. At the most. So, so like I could be there in a, three minutes. I could run down there. Oh, Jeff, I saw your workout the other day. That was good shit. The half mile ruck and the, the push ups and all that. Okay, so I'm actually going to call Emily now and find out the details and find out how I can help with the event. But Emily did say in the text, she goes, hey, I think it would be nice if a lot of people, if you opened up to people who listen to your podcast, which was really fucking nice of her. Um, I already invited one person from the podcast. But I'm sure I'm sure it's going to turn into a fucking shit show. The good thing is, is that um, uh, there'll be multiple of these. Like if this if this goes off good, which I think it will, uh, I think that he might start doing these one or two times a month so that um, we can get content and just keep in, and use that content to help building out uh, his his vision for where BSI is headed, where him and Emily's vision is. So. All right. Um, it's getting close to rocket shit time. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, well, tomorrow's going to be nuts. I think tomorrow I'm doing three shows. Thursday, I'm doing six shows. Friday, six shows. Um, and, uh, Susa is not, Susa is flying out to Charlotte today, CrossFit Charlotte, to begin the setup for the live stream. So there is no, uh, Susa show today. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Oh, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Is today um, Pedro's show? Pedro is, I always forget to talk about Pedro's show. Or is that Wednesday? Anyway, check out Coffee Pods and Wads. Talk to you guys soon. Wait, what's happening here? 